Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. Innistrad Midnight Hunt has been released officially now, as well as the two Commander decks that came out alongside it. And of course, these new cards are having an impact on card prices in the secondary market. Now, we're not going to be talking about the Innistrad cards and their prices today, because they just came out. We don't have any data to really look at for trends yet. But as they do begin to stabilize, we will start to work them in over the next week or two. Aside from that, we're going by the same rules we have been going with. There's a $2 threshold for this video, so we're not going to talk about a card unless it's moving at least $2 in either direction. And we won't be discussing any really egregious examples of market manipulation that just don't make sense. Don't want to waste your time with that. Quickly, though, before we get into the details, just a fast reminder, if you go to FlipSideGaming.com, you can use the Heroes promo code to save 10% on orders over $10. Currently, you can pick up Innistrad Midnight Hunt products there as well as a number of other things on their website. Remember, if your order is over $100 or it consists only of singles, shipping will be free in the United States. And whenever you use the promo code, it does support the channel, which is always appreciated. So thank you, and without any further ado, let's get into it. We'll begin with the standard legal spotlight. This is where we look at the standard legal cards that are moving the most this week. And we have a new standard rotation just occurred, so let's see what's happening. We have a couple cards going up in value. The first one is Goldspan Dragon. This is up 369 this week to 4927. And this is all over the new standard. You'll find this in Is It Tempo, Prismari Midrange, Is It Dragons, Grixis Dragons, Jun Treasures, sometimes Gruel Aggro. And this does continue to see a ton of commander play as well. You'll find this in builds like Prosper Tomebound, Tiamat, Wolfgar Vicewind Dale, and much more there. And our second card is Demi Lich. It's up 558 this week to 1499. And this has been getting a little commander play, sure. But the reason it's going up this much right now is because of modern, believe it or not. There are four of these in a Jeskai Phoenix build. That deck is running some new cards and performing really well on MTGO right now. It even made the top eight of a recent modern challenge when it was piloted by Aspiring Spike. The deck runs four copies of another newer card, Faithless Salvaging along with four copies of two cards from Innistrad Midnight Hunt, Consider, and Faithful Mending. That takes us to the Pioneer Legal Spotlight. First, we have a couple cards going down in value. Spire Bluff Canal, down $238 to $20.57. This got hot when Modern Horizons 2 shook up the modern format not too long ago. A lot of players were trying to put together new builds or update old ones, and they needed some land cards for these mana bases. And of course, these cards did cross over into a number of different decks. Now that the dust is settling a little bit and people have their decks together, cards like this are cooling off at least a little bit. This is still a highly played land though in Pioneer, it's in Is It Phoenix, Is It Spells, Modern, you're going to find this in a ton of different decks, Is It Tempo, Living End, Grixis Luris, Gift Storm, that new Jeskai Phoenix build I just mentioned. Sometimes this is in Jeskai Blitz and more there. And it's a solid Commander mana base card as well. Dragonlord Jermoka. This is the copy from the list. It was added with Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. It is sticking around into Midnight Hunt. It goes down 379 this week to 3981. Now, this recently saw more commander play due to the push the Dragon Tribe received in Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. Since this is remaining on the list for a second set, though, and because commander players are turning their attention to other tribes, the ones supported by Midnight Hunt, we are seeing this cooling off a little bit. Now for some cards going up in value, Gaia Reach Bandit up 243 to 595, and you know why this is going up in value. Innistrad Midnight Hunt brought a lot of werewolf tribal support, and commander players are putting together decks around this tribe. Many of them are using a new card from the set as the commander, Tovalar Dire Overlord slash Tovalar the Midnight Scourge. Next we have the Scarab God, Double Masters up 322 this week to $22, Hour of Devastation up 354 to 2225. Now in Pioneer, this is in 5-color Yorian, sometimes Niv to Light, but again, the reason it's moving this much this week falls back to Innistrad Midnight Hunt and the influence that set is having on Commander. Zombies are another tribe that got a big push, not just because of cards from the main set, but also because of the Undead Unleashed Commander deck that came out with Midnight Hunt. This is a very good upgrade to that deck, and some Commander players are picking up copies of this to put in fresh builds around a card from there. will help the Rock Cleaver. 
Same story here. Relentless Dead up 639 to 2819, moving because of the increased zombie support from Midnight Hunt. Another good card to upgrade on Dead Unleashed, or to put in a fresh build around Will Help the Rock Cleaver. Arclight Phoenix is the last card in this section, going up 1067 to 1945. Sure, this has seen a tad bit of commander play, and it is a good pioneer card and is a Phoenix builds, but the reason this is moving as much as it is right now is because of that new modern Jeskai Phoenix deck we mentioned earlier. That brings us to the modern legal spotlight. Again, we'll look at some cards going down in value and then some going up in value. First, we have the original Cavern of Souls from Avacyn Restored. It goes down 344 to 8449. This did join the list with Keldheim, and it's sticking around all the way now through Innistrad Midnight Hunt. So there are going to be some more copies coming into the marketplace as players are opening those set booster packs again. However, there is another copy of this card that is going up in value. You will see it later in the video. With that being said, this sees a ton of play in Modern. Five color elementals, Amulet Titan, Eldrazi Tron, Eldrazi Spirits, Humans builds, Merfolk, Goblins. This also gets a lot of legacy play, a little vintage play. But many people just know this as a highly played commander card. This is seeing even more play now because of Innistrad Midnight Hunt and the support for various tribes that came out of there, including werewolves. I have seen this already in a lot of Tovalar builds, including the Tovalar build that was on Game Nights this week. Additionally, we know more support for these various tribes will be coming in Innistrad Crimson Vow, especially for vampires. And remember, that set is also going to have two commander decks. One is called Vampiric Bloodline. The other is called Spirit Squadron. Black Cleave Cliffs, another card that got really hot during that modern format shakeup, cooling off a little bit. It goes down 381 to 3959. Now, this is still seeing a lot of play in a lot of places in modern. Jund, Rakdos, and Grixis Lurus are all going to run this. Plus, you'll find this in a lot of other decks in the format. And it is a decent commander mana base card as well in a lot of different builds, old and new. Liliana of the Vale from Innistrad, down 391 to 8632. Now, there's a couple of reasons this could be losing value right now. The first is we know that Innistrad Crimson Vow is going to have box toppers. We just don't know what the theme of those box toppers is quite yet. However, people are speculating maybe they're going to be reprints from older Innistrad sets. If that's the case, this could be a prime candidate for another reprint. But I think the main reason it's losing this much value right now really ties into gameplay. When you look at Modern, this is seeing a lot less play in this post-Modern Horizons 2 meta compared to what it was doing before. Now you do still see it around. Sometimes it's in Reanimator and Modern. Legacy, it's in Smallpox. Plus, it does get some Commander play. The original Wooded Foothills from Onslaught. This goes down 424 to 94, 98. This card got pretty hot back when Time Spiral Remastered came out. A lot of players became interested in those original card frames again. And they wanted to pick up these fetch lands from this set. Then it started to cool off. And right when that was happening, that Modern Shakeup occurred. Again, a lot of people flocked to cards like this. It went back up. Now we are seeing some retraction. Not too surprising. But remember, it is still a fetch land. It's going to see a ton of modern play, see a ton of legacy play. And you're going to find this in a lot of commander builds, including the new popular Tovalar decks. Cabal Coffers from Plane Chase. This is down 457 this week to 3991. Now this was reprinted not too long ago in Modern Horizons 2. And that printing did make it modern legal. However, it just really hasn't done a whole lot in that format. So basically, it just created a situation where a lot more copies got out there for the Commander players. So because of that, this card has been very soft for a while now. It's still a huge Commander card, though. It's in many builds old and new. Potentially a good upgrade to Undead Unleashed. And I've also seen this show up in a lot of fresh builds already around Will Help the Rock Cleaver. Worldfire already on the way down. It's down 549 this week to 1788. Not a very popular magic card until recently when the Commander Rules Committee unbanned it in the format. Last week we saw a very aggressive spike because of that. This week we're already seeing the retraction. Now when it comes to Commander gameplay, does it show up in every deck running red? Of course not, but it does show up in some. I have seen this in Joy Rev the Get To and more. That original expensive copy of Blood Moon from the Dark is down 796 to 8464. Now, you can get other copies of this card much cheaper if you just want to put them in a deck, but I do think this will rebound sooner than later simply because collectors are still very interested in getting this in high grade. Now, when it comes to gameplay, this is really doing well in this new modern meta. You'll find this in a lot of main decks as well as sideboards there. It's in Is It Tempo, Crashing Footfalls, Is It Control, Eldrazi, Enchantress, and more. Also continues to get a lot of legacy play and a good amount of commander play in various builds. 
It is even showing up in some Tovalar decks now. Back to cards going up in value with Ragavan, Nimble, Pilfer. This goes up 453 this week to 8461. And this card just appears everywhere nowadays. Modern, it's in Is It Tempo, Jund and Rakdos Luris, plus much more. In Legacy, you'll find this in the very popular Is It Delver deck, as well as a lot of other builds there. It even shows up in Vintage, and it is a fairly popular commander, plus part of the 99 of a lot of decks there too. Aboro Palace in the Clouds is rebounding after some recent losses. This is up 489 this week to 8990. In Modern, this is in Mill and Merfolk. Also see some commander play. But keep in mind, next year we are returning to Kamigawa with the set Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Like I said last week, I don't think they're going to put this in the regular set and make it standard legal. But I could see some kind of original Kamigawa reprint subset. Or maybe they just throw it in the list. Savage Beating. Wow, this price increase has been a savage beating. This is going up 533 this week to 4233. Now, it has been a solid commander card, but it is seeing more play now in Tovalar builds there. A couple weeks ago, Talarian Community College did a video about Commander Tovalar and mentioned this card and another card that it combos with Spellbinder. I do think that video could have introduced a lot of new players to that combo. When it comes to Spellbinder, that card has cooled off a little bit this week. It is more stable. However, spoiler, we will see the foil copy of that card later in the video. Now, aside from being in Tovalar Commander builds, I do think the combo could show up in other decks as time goes on too perhaps in a vampire build when Crimson Vow and Vampiric Bloodline come out. Fury of the Horde, this is another card seeing increased commander play in Tovalar decks, and to a lesser degree in Florian Valder and Scion decks. The copy from Dual Deck Speed vs. Cunning is up 224 to 599. The Cold Snap copy is up 572 to 997. Last card in this section is Gravecrawler. The Dual Decks Blessed vs. Curse copy is up 308 to 1229. The Mystery Booster copy is up 757 to 1688. In spite of the fact that extra convention mystery booster boxes were recently sent out to game stores, bringing more copies of this card into the marketplace. And finally, we have Dark Ascension, the original, up 808 to 1797. Now, this has been in Legacy Hogak, but the reason it's moving now, of course, is because of Innistrad Midnight Hunt and the increased commander play this is getting with that zombie tribal support. Another good upgrade to Undead Unleashed, and yet another card you might want to put in a fresh Will Help the Rock Cleaver deck, too, in Commander. That takes us to the Vintage Spotlight. This is where we talk about cards that see play in Legacy, Vintage, 93, 94, or cards that are just popular among collectors. There is still a lot of market manipulation happening in the Vintage market, so be careful if you're making any purchases to your homework. But I will say there's a lot less compared to a few months ago, which is good news. Also, just a reminder, the prices in this section are going to be very reminiscent of what you might see on a price tracking website. And when it comes to the older, more iconic cards, that does mean you're getting a mixture of high-grade raw and high-grade graded prices. So just keep that in mind in this section. The first card is Emrakul of the Yon's Torn. This is the copy from the list that did leave the list after Kel time. It is up 260 this week to 5695. Now this is Bandit Commander, but it does see a lot of modern and legacy play. In modern, this is an indomitable creativity. Many times you'll find this in Just Get Control and much more. You do see this a lot of times come out of the sideboard there to answer the mill deck. In legacy, you'll see this in Sneak and Show, Doomsday, and more in that format. Sway of the Star is another card that is banned in Commander, going up 358 this week to 1288. What is the story here? Well, this is speculation based on the fact that Worldfire was unbanned in Commander. Some players looked at that card, looked at this one, saw the similarities, and thought maybe I should pick up some copies. There was even discussion around this on an MTG Finance message board, but that discussion included an important piece of information. Sheldon Mennery did an article talking about why they decided to unban Worldfire in the Commander format, and in that article, he does shed some light on this card. The gist of what he said was, is simply, don't read too much into one unbanning. It doesn't mean other similar cards will become unbanned. And he also said there was a big difference between Worldfire and this card, and that difference is this card replenishes your hand. So sure, it does some similar things, but the caster using floating mana could get a big advantage here because of all the cards in their hand. I do anticipate that this will quickly start to stabilize and go back down. Savannah from Revised, the 408 this week to 399.50. This is the last white border card in this section that is not part of the Unlimited set, so I won't keep saying that. Just know from this point forward in this section, if you see a white border card, it is from Unlimited. Goblin King is up 1465 to 6468. Gaia's Cradle from Urza Saga, this is up 1664 to 1052.34. This has been trending down for a while, but it jumps up again this week. It feels like it's been rebounding a lot. 
In Legacy, you'll find this in Elves, Maverick, Vintage, it's in Hollowvine. Great commander card, too, and numerous builds old and new. I even saw this in that Tovalar build on Game Nights this week. Alabara's Carpet is up $20.02 to $169.97. Jandor's Ring from Arabian Nights goes up $20.39 to $120.49. Eye for an Eye from Arabian Nights goes up $23.35 to $65.99. Rock Hydra up $25.40 to $124.87. Desert Nomads. Now, this is not on the reserve list, but it's yet to be reprinted because of its very unique ability here. It goes up 2678 to 7249. It does feel like a buyout. King Suleiman is here again, up $30.63 to 261.82. Royal Assassin goes up 62.98 to 279.95. Gaia's Liege is up $70 to $200. And finally for the section, Tundra is up $260 to $1,307.50. And it is time for the Commander Spotlight, also kind of the best of the rest. All the cards in this section are moving, at least in part because of Commander, but in some cases there are other factors too. Huntmaster of the Fells from Dark Ascension. This goes up $2 to $29.99, and it is increasing in value because of the Werewolf Tribal Support we discussed earlier. It is showing up in Tovalar builds, including the one that was on Game Nights this week. Brood Sliver from Legions. This is up $204 to $17.10. Solid Sliver for Commander Sliver decks. It has lost some value recently, now it's rebounding a little. Goblin Settler, this is up $224 to $44.99. This is yet to be reprinted, and it is a little dry online this week. It does get a tad bit of commander play. Mystic Gate, the copy from Double Masters, is here again up $232 to 1943, and this is a solid commander mana base card. However, it sees modern play too. You'll find this in Jeskai Control, Azorius Yorian, Reanimator, sometimes Esper Control as well. Undead Warchief, Solid Zombie Lord, moving now because of that new zombie support from Innistrad. Another good upgrade to Undead Unleashed, and another good card to put in a fresh build around Will Health the Rock Cleaver. Time Spiral up 206 to 984. Plane Chase goes up 233 to 942. Lich Lord of Onyx from Alora Reborn, this goes up 236 to 1749. Now, when it comes to gameplay, just copy and paste everything I said about the last card. However, there is a difference here. This is joining the list with Midnight Hunt, so there are going to be at least some copies entering the marketplace. Now, the list isn't the most efficient way to get a lot of copies out there. Basically, it's going to take a little time before enough packs are cracked for it to make a big difference. And usually, it doesn't make a huge difference unless the card sticks around for multiple sets. Lord of the Undead from Plane Shift, moving for the same reasons Undead Warchief was as well. This goes up 269 to 1698. Norwood Priestess, another card that's yet to be reprinted a little dry online this week as it creeps up 290 to 144.99. You can see a tad bit of Commander play. Golgari Signet, now this is the copy from Commander Anthology Volume 2, but it is the copy with this particular art. There's a couple copies in that product. This goes up 298 to 753 this week. And this is another example of a particular card going up in value because it is dry this week online. With that being said, though, Signets get a ton of playing Commander in various builds. This one is even getting a little more play now in old Stick Fingers decks. It is worth noting, though, that Signets did get a reprint in the classic card frame in the Dan Frazier's Back Secret Layer. Mana Crypt, the copy from Eternal Masters, it goes up 308 this week to 156.60. This gets a lot of vintage and a lot of Commander play in various builds. It is another card, though, that is part of the Mystery Booster set, and like I said earlier, Convention Mystery Booster Boxes were sent out to game stores not too long ago, putting more copies of that variation of the card out there. Vidalkan Ori, the original one from Fifth Dawn, is up 319 this week to $45. This is being added to the list, though, with Midnight Hunt. Regardless, it is a very popular commander card, seeing more play now in Tovalar and Florian builds. As a matter of fact, this was in a Florian build on Game Nights this week. Viridian Revel, this is a pretty big percentage increase, up 322 to 359 Commander Void on YouTube played and discussed this card on a Saturday night Commander Hangout gameplay video last week. Then the channel followed up the next day with a short video talking about how this card is a great answer to all the decks using treasure tokens right now in Commander, including the popular Prosper Tomebound builds. This is also strong against things like Clue or Food Tokens. Overall, it is a very good Commander card and perhaps was underappreciated for a while. Master of the Wild Hunt, the copy from Magic 2010, goes up 330 this week to 2324. Another card that is getting more commander play and some Tovalar builds. This was in that Tovalar deck on Game Nights this week as well, but it is also another card being added to the list with Midnight Hunt. Here's that other copy of Cavern of Souls I mentioned. It is the one from Modern Masters 2017. 
It goes up 363 this week to 98.71. Relentless has solved the copy from Portal Second Age is up 372 this week to 1928, and this is a little bit of a rebound from the loss it had last week. And this is another example of a particular card going up in value because it is dry this week online, and that's resulting in some shakiness in the price. Good commander card though, it is getting more play in Tovalar and to a lesser degree Florian builds. I could again see this getting more play in the future after Crimson Vow and Vampiric Bloodline come out. Phyrexian Altar, this is a great commander card and combo enabler in various builds. Many players are now using this though as an upgrade to Undead Unleashed, or putting it in fresh builds around Will Help the Rock Cleaver. Plus, it is getting some additional commander play in Jaren Corrupted Bishop slash Ormondal the Corrupted decks. Ultimate Masters goes up 290 this week to 7253. Invasion is up 395 to 7398. Force of Will from Double Masters. This is a very popular commander card in many different decks. Also, it is a legacy and vintage staple. This goes up 405 this week to 11580. Aggravated Assault, another solid commander card getting more play in Tovalar builds. And another one that could see more play in the future when Crimson Vow and Vampiric Bloodline come out. The copy from Explorers of Ixalan goes up 256 to 4375. The Onslaught copy is up 560 to 4658. Sliver Overlord, the premium deck series Slivers copy, which only comes in foil. That goes up 410 this week to 4973. And the Scourge copy is up 579 to 4585. So this is another great commander card for Sliver builds. Many times you do see this as the commander. But the reason it's moving this much right now ties into another type of build in the Commander format. Commander Quarters did a video this week showing a Sliver Overlord deck that did not run any Slivers in the 99. Instead, it had Zerta the Dawn Waker and a variety of ways to turn your opponent's creatures into Slivers so that they can be taken. That video may have opened some players up to this strategy. And finally in this section we have Soldevi Golem up 1360 this week to 1799. This might very rarely show up in a Commander deck here or there. But ultimately, it doesn't really see much play anywhere. This appears to be a reserve list buyout. And that takes us to the premium spotlight. And again, I like to narrow this down to cards that are moving because of gameplay or some news or something along those lines, as opposed to talking about cards that are just dry in the marketplace or were bought out. This time I chose five different premium cards to discuss because I thought they were interesting. Remember, in the premium market, there is still manipulation happening out there, so be careful if you're making any purchases. I like to throw that disclaimer out there. And again, in this section, the prices you see on the screen are going to be very similar to what you might see on a price tracking website. But if true sales are not lining up with that price, I'll let you know what I'm seeing. Fury of the Horde, the foil copy from Cold Snap, is up 2122 in theory to 4612. Now, I have not seen any copies of these sell since the non-foil copy spiked. The previous sale was about $14, but sellers have been increasing the price, of course, since the non-foils went up in value. We'll have to see what happens with this long term. Can it sell for $46.12? Maybe, maybe not. I do know it's going to sell for more than $14, though. Spellbinder, the Dark Steel foil copy is up $21.56 to $40. We discussed this card when we were talking about Savage Beating. When it comes to true sales, are they really going for $40? Well, I have seen these sell for about $18. But again, the not foil copy has been spiking pretty fast, so I do think sellers are increasing the price because they don't want to miss out. Now, a lot of times sellers will do this, they'll jump the price, but they're usually more than willing to take a reasonable offer. Viridian Revel, the Scars of Mirrodin foil, this is up 4201 to $57 in theory. Again, same story here. I have seen these selling though for about $38, which isn't too far off. And because of the recent increases, it could get up to 57 potentially soon. But again, sellers are trying to stay ahead of the spike. Check this one out. Savage beating the Dark Steel Foil in theory going up 57.34 to 124.99. This price feels a little more inflated than some of the others we looked at today. I have seen these sell for about $40. And I do think with the non foil card spiking the way it is, future sales will be higher. But this price does seem a little too high perhaps. And finally, just for fun, here's the Judge Foil of Gaia's Cradle. Now, the non-foil copy from Urza Saga has been moving quite a bit recently. This one also starting to move again. It's up 203.95 to 3,409.99. Percentage-wise, not a big increase, but it could be an indicator that this is going to keep moving for a little while. Now, when it comes to true sales, I have seen high-grade raw copies sell for about 2,850. I have not seen any high-grade graded copies sell for a while, but I could see one going for somewhere close to this price. And that does it for this episode of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. If you're still with me, thanks for sticking around. 
As always, stay safe out there. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.